Viking history is packed full of action. Warriors, battles, rage-inducing plants, horde offerings, battle lust, and plenty of raiding and pillaging. Yet we have to take their history with a grain of salt. Most of it wasn't written down until a couple of hundred years after the Viking Age, which lasted from around 800 until 1066 AD. Legendary figures like Ragnar Lothbrok may or may not have actually existed, and lineages and events can often be hard to pinpoint. Netflix's show, Vikings Valhalla, tells part of this history in all its grim glory. What actually happened, and what's just been made up for compelling storytelling? Welcome back to Nutty History. Today, we're taking a look at what Netflix got wrong and right about the Vikings. Vikings Valhalla picks up 200 years after Ragnar Lothbrok and his sons tormented England and France with raid after raid. Events portrayed in the History Channel's hugely popular show, Vikings, a show that also blends a good amount of fact and fiction, despite airing on the History Channel. But hey, it's the same channel that features this guy broing out about ancient aliens. Anyway, the fact that Vikings Valhalla is on Netflix has maybe allowed the show to stray a bit farther from the historical record, mixing up timelines and creating characters out of thin air. The plot of the first season of the show centers around the Viking invasion of England and a quest for revenge by the Norwegian prince Harald Sigurdsson after his brother and a whole host of other Vikings living in England in a region known as the Danelaw were wiped off the earth by the forces of the English King Ethelred in an event called the St. Brice's Day Tragedy. All of these characters did actually exist. The St. Brice's Day Tragedy did actually happen. And the Vikings did actually invade England. But there are some serious problems with the who, what, when, where, and why of it all. First of all, the St. Brice's Day Tragedy of the Vikings in England happened in 1002 AD. Harold Sigurdsson, played by the almost too handsome Leo Suter in the show, despite looking like this on Norse coins. Ugh, ah, so dreamy. Sorry, where are we at right now? Oh yeah, right. So Harold Sigurdsson wasn't even born yet when the St. Brice's Day tragedy happened. Harold came into the world in 1015 AD. His brother was Olaf, King of Norway, and he did have some pretty wild adventures in his lifetime, but it's hard to get revenge if you're not alive. Then, in the show, King Canute of Denmark helps lead the invasion of Vikings forces into England to help Harold, again not born yet, avenge the death of his kinsmen on St. Brice's Day. In reality, though, it was Canute's father, Sven Fortbeard, who was seeking revenge for St. Brice's Day and invaded the island. Fortbeard's sister had apparently met her demise at the hands of the English, and the Danish king was less than pleased. According to Viking history, again a fairly shaky one at times, Canute most likely joined his father on multiple invasions of England over the next decade, which culminated in a Viking victory as the English king Ethelred and his son Edmund fled to Normandy in 1013 AD. Sven thus became the first Viking king of England, sort of. Sven died just a few months after capturing London. With Ethelred and his son Edmund still alive in Normandy, the English crown was basically up for grabs. The Vikings in Danelaw proclaimed Canute the King of England, while most of the other English lords still recognized Ethelred as king. Ethelred eventually came back from exile and forced Canute to retreat back to Denmark in the spring of 1014. Vikings Valhalla depicts Canute as the King of Denmark throughout the first season. It also has his father Sven entering the picture after Canute becomes King of England. In reality, Canute wasn't the king of anything before St. Brice's Day, and he still wasn't the king of anything even after his father's death. The Danish crown went to his older brother Harold. No, not that Harold. This Harold, officially known as Harold II of Denmark. He served as king while his brother Canute built up another fleet and then headed back to England to finish what his father started. Canute did finish what his father started. With a large coalition of Viking forces from Denmark, Norway, and Sweden, he invaded England in 1015 AD, and in 1017 he was crowned the King of England. Canute then went back up to Denmark, where his brother Harold subsequently died under mysterious circumstances. Could it have been just bad timing, or could it have been planned? Either way, in 1018, Canute became the King of England and Denmark. 
Now what happened next could potentially ruin some of the suspense in the upcoming seasons of the show, but hey, it is still history and it did still already happen. So if you want to check out Nutty History's full biography of Canute, hit the link and save it for later. The two main characters of Vikings Valhalla are Leif Erikson and his sister Freydis Eriksdottir. They are the offspring of Eric the Red, hence the surnames Eriksson and Eriksdottir. Eric was exiled from Iceland for unnecessary deaths he caused and ended up leading the settlement of Greenland. There is absolutely no evidence that Leif and Freydis ever journeyed to Norway or Sweden, and nothing about them ever participated in the Viking invasions of England. What is written about them, though, is compelling in its own right. A lot of what we know about Leif and Freydis come from the Vinland sagas. Now, to make things more confusing, they were written in Iceland. Vinland is a mysterious place that many historians think could have been North America. The sagas say that first Leif ventured west from Greenland to explore the Vinland, but after staying a winter or two, ended up returning. Then Leif's sister, Freydis, made the voyage with a guy named Thorfinn Karlsefni. When they hit land, they set up camp at the settlement that Leif had started possibly in Canada, and then proceeded to make natives mad, whom many believe were Native Americans. But depending on which saga you read, Freydis could either be a heroine or a cold-hearted lady. In one saga, she bravely fights off the Native Americans while she's pregnant. But in another, Freydis is a brutal conspirator who ended up ending many of her own people after a couple of harsh winters in this strange land. Either way, in the sagas, Freydis is a powerful warrior that no one wants to mess with, which the shows portray perfectly. One of the primary points of conflict in Vikings Valhalla is the one between the Christians and pagans. The show is set up as some kind of supreme battle between those who worship many gods and those who just worship one. The Vikings of Netflix are torn between Christianity and the paganism of Norse religion and it leads to a ton of death, both amongst the Vikings and between the Vikings and the English. The St. Bryce's Day tragedy is played up in the series as a kind of ethnic cleansing that pits the Christians against the pagans. Now, while this may have a bit of truth, the event probably had more to do with the fact that Ethelred and the English nobility were pretty tired of having to pay all these taxes to the Vikings in Danelaw in exchange for not having their heads taken by the Norsemen. The Christian-Pagan conflict wasn't really as cut and dry as the show portrays it. Now, to be fair, characters like Leif and Harold display a kind of back-and-forth wavering between paganism and Christianity that probably rings truest to historical fact. The truth is, as the Vikings expanded farther south and east into Europe, many of them converted to Christianity, but many of them did it more out of pragmatism than deep spirituality. It was economically useful to accept the one true God as your Lord and Savior. Lots of Vikings converted to Christianity because it helped the trade relations and allowed them to marry into Christian kingdoms and expand their influence. The truth was that many Vikings simply added the Christian capital G God to the pantheon of gods that they already worshipped. Evidence of this was found in Denmark, where a smith mold was found that had spaces for both the Christian cross and Thor's hammer, so the blacksmith could cater to both Christian and pagan clientele. Still, though, Christian missionaries were pretty relentless in their pursuit of covering as many Vikings as possible. It did lead to some conflicts, but not in a widespread way that it's portrayed in the show. It was, for the most part, a peaceful, slow process. Every good story needs an antagonist. Often, it comes in the form of an evil person who wants to destroy instead of create. In Vikings Valhalla, that person is Jarl Kora. Korra is a radical Christian Viking whose sole purpose seems to be purging Scandinavia of all pagans. He takes out plenty of innocents in the sacred village and temple of Uppsala, that's a real place where Vikings did go to pray and sacrifice to the gods. He then teams up with Olaf Haraldsson, himself a devout Christian, to march on Kattegat, a city that despite being depicted as a city in both Viking shows, is actually a 12,000 square mile of sea between Sweden, Denmark, and Norway. Olaf Haraldsson was in fact a devout Christian in the historical record. He became known as St. Olaf after Pope Alexander III canonized him in 1164, a little over 100 years after his death. Jarl Kora, on the other hand, is an entirely made-up character. There's no mention of him in any historical records and was used to stir up drama between the Christian-pagan dynamic.
One thing that the show does get right, and something that is often overlooked in Viking lore, is the fact that the Vikings were a pretty diverse group of people. They traveled all over the place, making it as far east as Constantinople and as far south as northern Africa. As a result, there was a mixing of cultures and people in Scandinavia that many people don't realize. Scandinavia around this time has been called a global North Atlantic, and while the name connotes a type of utopian pluralism, it was far from that, filled with much hate and violence, but it was diverse. The idea of the global North Atlantic was portrayed in the show through the character Jarl Hokon, the ruler of Kattegat. She's a woman of color, who in the first episode explains her African-Scandinavian descent and how she came to be the Jarl of Kattegat. Her character is apparently based loosely on Hakon Sugurdsson, despite the historical Hakon being a man and a Jarl in Norway. He was, however, the last pagan ruler of Norway and resisted attempts by Christian Vikings to convert everyone to Christianity in much the same way the fictional female Hakon did in the show. History is often a fuzzy thing. The history of the Vikings is one that combines legend with fact, and as a result, it makes more sense that dramatized accounts like the Viking series play with timelines and add characters to create a cohesive and entertaining story. What do you think will happen in Season 2 of Vikings Valhalla? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more Nutty History.